So this is simply an exposure. I like the word exposure. Exposure sort of implies that there's a pointing out of what is and is not. It's not really pointing to. There's no position to point to something. There's a sort of pointing out seeming to happen on behalf of no one. A pointing out of what is absolutely timeless, free, and not in any direction. There's no direction to point to. There's no direction to point to everything. There's no direction to point to nothing. There's just simply nothing pointing out what is and is not. And what is and is not seems to be no thing at all. This what is is not thingable. This what is is beyond subject and object. It's beyond time and space, cause and effect. It's beyond permanence and impermanence. It's beyond all labels and definitions, really. That's how this seems to be. This what is is simply undefinable. It's incomprehensible. There is just simply what's appearing to happen for no reason at all. There's no solidity or substance to what's appearing to happen. There's no knowing of what's appearing to happen. So what's appearing to happen, it seems, is someone sitting, talking about what's appearing to happen, but that's not real. And there's no real talking about this. This is just appearing as talking. And this what is has never really been anything else other than what is. Before and after is just this, really, apparently appearing as memories and ideas and perceptions. This what is is not really timely. So there's no real now and then. The exposure is that there is no real duality, polarity, paradigm or separation. So there's no real now and then. There's no real yesterday where some people were apparently listening to this. And there's no real after where one can watch it back on YouTube. There's no real now and then. And there's no real here and there either. The exposure is pointing out there's no real two, no duality, no separation. So there's no real here and there. Space is just an appearance. It's not real. So there's no here where I am and there where you are or where things are. There's no real inside and outside another appearance, which is not real. So inside and outside would seem to be a, a, an appearance of separation. Above, below, left, right, higher and lower. All these dimensions are just simply insubstantial appearances that have no meaning or purpose or significance. Nothing has any significance or importance behind it or married up and paired with it. All is just simply timeless, timelessly this. And timelessly this, without boundaries, therefore boundless, boundless freedom is everything, and yet it's not anything. And boundlessness seems to appear as all sorts of things, all sorts of things like form, tables, chairs, it appears as smells and tastes, it appears as elements, it appears as gases and electrons, it appears as all sorts of different things, it appears as movement and stillness, sound and silence, warmth and coolness, so temperatures and everything. Everything seems to appear, anything and everything seems to appear in and as this, not really in this, just simply this appearing as whatever is happening. And what can also seem to appear is a sense, or senses, a sense that someone is happening, a someone experience, the experience of personhood, an experience of being here. And this would seem to happen for the, a human physiology, where there's a sense that someone is 
here that there's suddenly a, a felt sense of being located a position in space and that seems to happen for many human bodies and it seems to happen at, at some time around a, a very young age recognize that all of these words are not real and that storytelling is just disappearing timelessly but there seems to be a sense that someone is located in a body and maybe with that a sense of distance and so primary caregiver whether it's mum dad or someone else is is someone i know now it's is something i know i relate to so in this sense of localization which can only lousily be called an energetic felt visceral sense of being here there's a there's a knowing experience seeming to happen a knowing a, an objectified world where my mum and dad are and and even sort of where my body is where my body is so the i am is seeming to feel viscerally real and everything seems to be noticed by me i'm aware of what's happening the sense of i i am and this what's being shared is responding in a way it's, it's sort of pointing out the illusory nature of that but as that seems to happen time also being sensed as objectively real therefore i'm moving through time i'm growing up i'm learning things i'm developing a mind a body things seem to be changing objectively and i'm knowing about change i'm relating to other people i'm relating to my memories and therefore my story of who i think i am as an individual and as that seems to develop there's a sense of moving in a direction through time and space and that there's consciousness with all of this and what also seems to set in is the sense that because someone's aware of what's happening aware of the body aware of a something called my mind and aware of everyone and everything else there seems to be a sense of being in control the experience of being here local in a body seems to give a sense of autonomy it's what is suggested is that that is a misinterpretation the the body seems to misinterpret that someone's in there and therefore someone's moving the body driving it going in this direction or that direction someone's calling the shots like a captain in the in the ship you know driving it the body seems to interpret that there's a captain in the brain or the heart or the nervous system or somewhere else the meta brain maybe sort of pulling strings like a puppeteer and with that awareness comes that sense of of control free will choice and as that sets in timelessly what seems to be felt is that because there's awareness because there's control with awareness body is is paired up with this sense of an individual in it choosing to go this way and that way and also what seems to set in is a sort of this is as the body is seemingly confirmed to be a person or there's a person in the body having a body and because control is a thing there is morality because someone is in control there is there has to be choices to be made just a choosing has to happen someone has to do it and because choosing has to happen there are apparently right and wrong decisions to be made this is a good idea that's a bad idea you should do this you shouldn't do that and as a story what seems to happen is is for many growing up in an apparent society with lots of other individuals who are confirming this as an absolute reality where you should fit in but also you can stand out you can make decisions to be a socially acceptable individual but also make progress towards something better and for some this will all sound quite familiar maybe for many it will sound quite familiar and for others maybe not so much
but the the morality and the ethical guidelines that seem to set in when going to school or or you know growing up with other kids and teachers and parents and there's sort of a, a seemingly tribal thing seeming to develop which is claimed as sophisticated or civilized but it's not really right and wrong decisions going this way and that way and the existential disease perhaps is a, is more apparent when this existential disease apparently becomes more noticeable the body whether it's at adolescent age or or a bit older or, or even younger it doesn't really matter but there seems to be a sense that that something's lacking somehow the sense of separation being here sort of has a, a felt sense that something is missing because the subjectified world is always in relation to objects. It seems to be looking for something else or someone else. And as seeking apparently happens, there's a, there's a looking for people, there's a looking for, for substances of various kinds, going to people and places to find this sort of satisfaction that would offer or seem to offer some sort of comfort or lasting relief to the individual because there's something that seems to be missing and maybe it it just sort of sensitively into it that i can't get this <laughs> in the words of the rolling stones i can't get no satisfaction i can't get no satisfaction from the from the disease you know it's not it's never enough it's never enough you know the drink the psychedelic the you know the the line the the cigarette the the netflix program the the you know what the next cosmetic whatever the hell it is it's never enough there's always a sense that that there's just something not quite right and perhaps there's a an inquiring as to what's going on on behalf of no one of course an inquiring an investigation maybe therapists can help me explore this and find the answers or maybe a shaman in in the Amazon or somewhere else, or maybe a um, a, a priest or a, a nun or a monk or something from a, a religious background, and they look quite well composed. Maybe they have the answers, or maybe yogis who have seemed to cleanse chakras and and ascended to other planes of consciousness. Maybe they have the the answers to this existential dis-ease that I seem to be experiencing. <laughs> it's sort of wonderfully sweet and innocent, and there's a, a sort of laughter because it's it's so sort of innocent in a way. It's it's kind of wonderful, the story of going somewhere to find the answers to what is actually already free. And when there's the relating to teachers and guides, practitioners of different lineages and backgrounds, there always seems to be something on offer in the same way a drug dealer has something to offer. I mean, it's a bit provocative sort of putting them in the same category, but there we are. There always seems to be something on offer to me, a teaching, a practice, a sutra with a, with a very sort of sacred, you know, and, and holy looking thing, you know, the books and, and teachings, you know, and it always seems to offer me something. I can I can get more whole. I can become more complete and and impressive and worthy. I can feel integrated and whole. It it, it all seems very promising and hopeful. And maybe it does seem to seem to offer relief for a while. But of course, in the same way, it's, the suggestion is in the same way the substance wears off the activity, the person, the novelty of having a new practice or whatever it is wears off, there's still a sense that something is lacking. Because as far as this is concerned, all the time there is that sense of separation. There is always a sense that something is lacking. You know, the, the Garden of Eden quite beautifully demonstrates and illustrates this when the, the sense of two bodies feeling separate from and having some sort of knowledge of what's going on there's a there's a sense that mm, there's something wrong or something this it's not really wrong just is what's happening and the separation would never really seem to get the relief it's looking for 
because there is no one to be separate. There is just an illusory appearance of separation. And that separation is the sort of appearance of contraction or or dis-ease, dissatisfaction. It's a sort of unsatisfying appearance and experience. What is pointed out with all of that is that none of that is real and none of it means anything. What is, is already not really separate. The separate experience is completely illusory and it will never find what it's looking for because what it's looking for beyond an apparent non-real realm of objects is total absence of separation. The dream of separation never finds its end, never finds absence, because absence is not something. It's not a something to be found. It is already what is. It's already everything. And looking for that only seems to illusorily confirm that absence is missing, which doesn't make any sense. Looking for unconditional freedom or love is actually staring at everything and everyone in the face. It's bouncing, it's throbbing, it's singing, it's playing, it's screaming, it's agony, it's fear, it's terror, it's pain, it's dread, it's tragedy, and it's love and joy and laughter and, and elation and euphoria. There's nothing that unconditional freedom excludes because it is unconditional, it's everything. There's nothing really separate from that. No direction offers that because it's everything, including the sense of direction. It's never revealed, therefore. It's never moved towards or away from. Unconditional freedom is everything. There's no limitation to that. There's no boundaries to that. Separation is the illusion that there are boundaries and limitations finite appearances, which is not real. That's all. The exposure is pointing out abundantly that this is already timelessly free. And because unconditional freedom is unconditional, the separation experience, albeit illusory, is just as much unconditional freedom as anything else. But there already isn't anything else. So this cannot really be talked about. Talking around seems to happen, but there can't really be talking about unconditional love or freedom or nothing being everything. There's just this freedom appearing to talk and listen. And what can seem to happen is a dialogue, communicating, listening, talking, questions and answers, and attempts maybe, trying, seeking, striving, resisting, resonating is all totally this totally this there is nothing that's not this and that's all that's exposed really the freedom incomprehensible freedom beyond beautiful beyond loving beyond everything and yet is everything never lost never found never missing Never mistaken, never wrong or right, just absolute love. Good morning. Hello, love. <laughs> Man, wiping out this version of a life that <laughs> I was attached to um it's a it, i heard this last night listening to to a talk you had um when i first heard tony many years ago i had I'd hated it mm -hmm. I absolutely hated it i didn't want I, i'm just saying what came right mm -hmm. didn't want that version I wanted a different version yeah. And then uh, I don't even know what joke Kate got me to go to your talk when you were here in California. And I'm sitting there going, 
that's not the version. I didn't want this version. <laughs> um, and then I see that as a search for the version that was searching for a version. Mm -hmm. I got because as long as it's right for me, I'm going somewhere. I'm real. I'm safe. I am. Yeah. There's no version. No. And there's no, there's so many stories. There's no story that ever meaning stories of like Judaism, Buddhism, Christianity, mm -hmm. the holy ones, the enlightened ones, the the ones that were you know elevated in mm -hmm. them and that It was already, already this, just, it was this with the stories of that. And of that was never anything else but this. Mm -hmm. And then was never then, always this, mm -hmm. always this. Yep. And, uh, oh, I thought I was going to wake up at 5.30, sorry. I woke up earlier. <laughs> and this doesn't do anything. I mean, it does, it doesn't, there's no, it doesn't become. No. I don't know what to do with my life. Well. There's already no doer. There's already no one that has a life. Life is not moving in a direction. It's already this. It's like I always, it's like it's, I always knew it. And yeah, it's totally unknowable. Yeah. Correct. No can possible. And yet there's still this weirdly engaging with it all in a in a way that is seemingly knowable to every every the it's it seems it's relating to the whole thing of it as um uh, well I can't find words. You're explaining the dream. It's relating in the dream completely knowingly as it's in the dream. Correct, right. I'm explaining the dream. That's right. Which has already been exposed as illusory. That's right. And it's not wrong. There was never a wrong decision because there is no decider. There is just unconditional freedom being whatever is happening. So it's it's never wrong or right. Yeah. It's just simply what's appearing. which is neither real or unreal. <laughs> Hi, can you hear me?
Hey, yes. Hi. Um, I think it said something like there's a longing. Mm. Is that correct? Like a longing for not being separate. Yes, it's a sort of impersonal, what seems to be impersonal longing. Yeah. But uh, so how can there, or where's, it's not where, but how can there be a longing for something by something? <laughs> no, it's not. It's, where's the longing? Yeah, it's, what, it's, what is longing? It's not. Uh, Yeah, no, no one longs for absence. Longing, but if there's no one, hmm. why is there a need for longing? Why is there longing if there, there's there isn't no... a need for anything? Hmm. This this separation, illusory separation experience, is the is the illusion of need, the need <laughs> to be me. And so it goes after all sorts of objects to confirm its separate reality, to feel safe and secure in a dream of separation. But what is longed for by no one, therefore, is not real, really real. What is longed for is the end of separation. To get back to the Garden of Eden, which was never lost, never missing, is already this. Okay. Only knowing so here, about it, no. only knowing about it seems to make it feel absent. So here longing is experienced as like longing for Things to be different, longing for this and that, like, like in separation, yeah. like longing for reality to be different, longing for, yeah, that's like separation. So, yeah. And the longing that is spoken of is something that has nothing to do with any situation, right? Yeah, like what's, what's longed for is already what is. What's longed for? But what is longing then? Nothing, nothing is longing. Nothing is longing. No. There is no... So, it's confusing to call it longing. It's, it's just incomprehensible. I mean, longing is not really happening. What's longed for is what already is. What's wanted is something else. I'm seeking, <laughs> I'm seeking for something else. I'm resistant yeah. to what it is. What's longed for is beyond seeking and resistance, beyond separation. There is no real separation already. This is what's longed for. In a way, it sounds confusing and complex, but actually it's beyond simple. It, it's just... It's incomprehensibly simple. This already is totally free. I was wondering this morning, why on earth go to these meetings? <laughs> yeah, I, I got, there's nothing to get. Probably it's just nice, nice uh, bodies to hang out with. But no, of course not. But I really got, well, there's nothing to get for me in here. It's nothing to <laughs> improve my life, nothing to get my health better, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. So why why attend? Well, uh, perhaps because there's a wanting for something. Definitely there's a wanting for, for something, yes. And there's also yeah. perhaps a sense that something is wobbling. Wobbling? Mm. What's that? The wanter. The illusory, What does wobbling mean? The illusory wanter is being exposed for its totally illusory and insubstantial nature. 
It's mm. a kind of, in a way, without wanting to make it sound special or significant, because it totally isn't, but it's a kind of energetic shaking, a resonating. It's got nothing to do with anyone, and it's it's already not real. But there seems to be a, a resonance. The suggestion is that that, that is what's happening, because... <laughs> there's so obviously nothing to get out of this and yet mm. body apparently still comes to meeting it was fun talking to yeah. you and the guys yesterday yeah. so but yeah that can't be the reason yeah but intellectually for some for many perhaps the answers are already known intellectually the answer is already known what more can be said Nothing is everything. There is no one. There's no separation. There's no chooser. This, what is, is already timeless and free. It's pretty much it in a nutshell. People don't travel across the world to hear that umpteen thousand times. They're looking at something. Yeah. And perhaps something else, which is not real or important, seems to be happening. Yeah. Definitely my body reacts to this and in in, yeah, yeah there's a reaction yeah i can't even put into words but this body is yeah so thank you yeah for doing this nice even though no one's doing it yeah well yeah but thank you too anyway i i, I can't get used to non non-duality language oh of... don't worry don't worry it's nothing to no. do with that. yeah no <laughs> I, yeah. yeah well yeah thanks thank you and yes it, it is lovely to chat yeah well one more thing <laughs> um somebody reported like yesterday in the in the meeting like um when hearing like really hearing this for the first time like there was an energy explosion in the body blah blah, yeah. blah. and i was thinking about it what but why you know why is the body like reacting in extreme ways to this it was kind of sounded kind of scary to me like mm. <clears throat> electricity in the body blah 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 mm. and well, that's not a um it doesn't have to happen no right but for some it just seems very palpable there, there's a sort of hearing this without someone hearing it it's in, can't really be described but there there seems to be a a yes that that is totally beyond anyone saying yes that there's a it's like a, a sort of energetic click or resonating or shift but it's not real it's not a it's not an event or an experience not a state it's not even a real shift but it just can seem like something clicks or turns sounded like an extreme physical experience mm. yeah it can it can be that way it can be but it doesn't have to no no mm. okay okay Hi, Alexis. Hey. You're right. Hi. Hey, nice to see you. Rob. Thanks. And you? Are you in a new place? Mm. Yeah. Oh. Just down the road. Yeah. I'm oh, still in Leicester. Mm. Um, I had a bit of a list actually. Um, well, yeah. So there's. I mean, I was just thinking how bonkers it is this morning that I've got habits that I kind of think are bad habits mm. for me. And you, you don't know? really. You, know. you what? You don't really have habits, no. 
Well, this, this, I seem to. Do I not have habits? There is no you to have habits. That's, yeah, 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 that's the one, yeah. I don't, that's the, that's what I just can't get in my head around. Like, these seemingly self-destructive things that I do, and yet there's nobody for them to be self-destructive to. It just seems, because I'm like, oh, I need to cut that out, and I need to change that about myself, and mm -hmm. then my life will be better. And yet there's no one, what you're saying is there's no one having a life. There's no one. Yeah, there's already no one in the body. In a body, should I say. Not the body. There's no one in a body. Yeah. It's, it completely... It completely revolutionises the whole world if, you, if it's seen like that, doesn't it? Well, it, it, it revolutionises the whole world by exposing that there isn't one. There's not a world. No. But there's nobody inside anyone. Or outside who? The, the dream is that there is an inside and an outside. That's the sort of the projection of separation that says this is inside and that's outside. This is where I am and this is where I'm not. That's not yeah. real. That's not real. There's no insight. So yeah. So in my work colleagues, I believe that there's me and there's them. Mm -hmm. And the way I, you know, the way some of them are behaving at the moment towards the management, I think I think, oh, they should be ashamed of themselves, you know? as if there's someone there mm. who should be feeling ashamed or will when they realise or see things from my point of view, that suddenly they will be full of shame and, and stop all the silly games that they're playing with, with the boss. Yeah. <laughs> it's all completely illusory. Because as long, as long as those people over there, despite me not liking them very much, they are definitely choosing to behave in this way in which I don't like. That means that I am a real individual that is also making decisions. Yeah. This, this is a hopeless exposure because what's exposed is that not only is there no one to be knowing this or, or relinquishing anything or holding on, that means... Every body is totally free of of choosing and responsibility. Yeah. It's impossible to understand. Or if, it's, if it's yeah. Sorry. Or accept. It's unacceptable. Yeah. It's awful. <laughs> and yet you total unconditional love and liberation unrequited yeah it's both yeah I just can't understand it no it, I, 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 I I yeah hmm So this, the, like, what, what I feel is that, for me personally, part of my identity is a victim, a bit of a victim narrative. Right. Yeah. And I often feel like I'm a victim of others mm -hmm. in a way that I kind of did when I was a child, certain experiences that I had. Yeah. And nobody's having that uh, perspective on, on oneself. Is that right? That's just what's happening. There's already no one to be having anything. That's just simply what's appearing. And those stories are not real. All that's seeming to happen is this, what's happening. And talking about stories is this appearing to happen, but there's no real stories.
And, you know, the victim mentality would, although be deemed unpleasant, uncomfortable, and maybe even painful, the victim mentality, despite that, would seem to offer comfort because it means that I am. Yeah, I am helpless, you know. Yeah. But I am, of course, yeah. God. I think when the me hears this, the or whatever hears this that thinks itself to be real, absolutely hates this message because it just takes it out of the whole picture completely. It can yes, there there can be all sorts of reactions and responses, yeah. Because what it's looking for is something that it can know about, relate to, own, chew on. Something I can have, something that I feel safe in relation to. This is exposing. It's death. It's death. The, the death of the dream of separation and individuality, ownership, knowership, relationship. It's exposing that all of that is not real. There's no one to get anything out of this. This isn't something to be gotten. That is liberation, <clears throat> but it's also humiliation and despair. It's what's longed for, it's not what's wanted. Yeah. Yeah, the me wants its safety loops, but apparently that's not even happening, right? No. The safety loops of this is my job, this is my flat, this is my... Yeah beliefs this is me this is who i am this is how i dress this is what i eat yeah and that's all nothing appearing to happen absolutely nothing that's freedom happening but that, that can't be accepted can it because it's it's there, like well that can't be freedom because it feels burdensome there's no one to accept this this is already what's happening It's already been accepted, is what you're saying? Not really, because that sounds like someone accepted this. But it's already what's happening, so it doesn't need to be accepted or allowed, because it is already what's happening, and yet it's not real. Yeah. Yeah. I won't even say the me thinks this. I'll just say I think. I think... that I want to be able to accept this and then yeah. do something about it, basically. Yeah, because if I accept this, then I'll be happier or I'll be comfortable or better or whatever. Yeah, I'll make better choices. I'll go and do A, B and C. I'll be in a better situation. There's, no, there's already no I yet to accept or resist. So resistance and, and you know, whatever is happening is just totally what is, yeah. It's not more or less this. It's not more or less anything. It just is no thing appearing as this. Yeah. The, the world of the me has got all its dramas, hasn't it? So yeah, does this... No. Oh. It's not a problem. It's not. A no, problem. it's not. There's no validation that that's a problem that needs to change or, or anything. It's just this appearance, mm. tightness, tension, yeah. contraction, irritation, agitation. The list goes on, but there is no real list. There's no real anything. This is just simply nothing appearing as that. Mm. Yeah, it's very dissatisfying. <laughs> Not that I don't enjoy these meetings. I do. That dream of resistance is not being fed here. No. <laughs> it's you not. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs>
Because <laughs> uh, yeah, if, if I go to the, I go to the monastery, I go to the monastery quite a lot, and if I spoke to the abbot about things, he's got he, he's he's got so much helpful things to tell me uh -huh. that then then I never ever 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 am able to do hmm. his suggestions, you know, because yeah. there's. There's no one there. But then I think, oh, well, that just is, that shows that I'm out of control, but that's not even what you're talking about, is it? You're not talking that's, about someone that's out of control. Yeah, there's you're no talking about in, someone that's not even there. Yeah. There's, there's just not any control whatsoever. There's no one in or out of control. There's no one in or... Exactly. It's awful. You can't let... I can't let go of that because it's like you're like a dog with... A, I'm like a dog there with a bone then. no one to let go or... no. mm. yeah it seems to come very naturally from you the message it's not coming from me all right but the apparent body of alexis it seems to come out quite naturally i always find that whenever whenever i come out with the sort of things that you're talking about it doesn't come out very well. It doesn't flow out very well because there's somebody saying it. Mm. Did you ever have that experience when you were falling away that you'd kind of, you'd made this message into a new uh, self-identity and that you would try and share it with people and it was unnatural? Mm. In an illusory story that was hearing about it and, you know, sort of a percolating seeming to happen. Percolating. Sort of listening and resisting and resonating and all the rest of it. Never yeah. meant anything or went anywhere. And did you find that when you started speaking about it, it felt just, it didn't feel anything, it just happened? Well... There was seemingly, again, in an illusory story, residual bits, residual me behind words. And as speaking happened, no one was left to be yeah. to be uttering or to be not uttering. There was just yeah. a... I think that's what Andreas said as well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Funny. Yeah. I was just going to say, um, if if you're feeling famished, then at least after meeting, you can go back to the abbot to get filled up again. <laughs> oh, yeah, I will. Don't you worry about that. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's not, there's an, the spiritual buffet is it's just a few clicks away. It's I mean, you know. Yeah, it's in abundance out there. Yeah. Even though there is no out there. And what they say is so similar to this message. Not really. No, it's not. It's, yeah, it's completely different, but it's similar. Because they say it's like, you know, the, the abbot is, is actually, he's retired now, but his whole teaching was, it's like this. That was his teaching, it's like this. Mm -hmm. But then, of course, it's somebody seeing that it's like this. You know, he'd be like, this is what's happening. But then it's someone. Oh, but you can do X, Y and Z in order to see that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Giving giving some offering some hope. Yeah. And, and yeah. seeming to to promise that there's some relief on offer for for me for an experience. Yeah. Uh, it's all totally within the dream of separation. Yeah, it's re it's about relating to another that can that can teach someone to to move steadily, gradually, or suddenly towards a destination where you will get to. Mm. It's talking to the, the that experience, which is totally not wrong at all. If for many, it's very very sweet and innocent and sincere. It seems, but it's totally 
in that sense that there's a separate individual who can choose to do this or that, who will arrive at a promised land. It's never this. It's never already free or already nirvana. And even yes. some traditions within Buddhism will, will try and sort of initiate this already as nirvana, but it's it's still not enough. It's just still sort of with terms and conditions wrapped yeah. up. And it's uh, as long as that sort of experience is seeming to happen, it's never enough. It's just never enough. It just always has to be mm. a millisecond or a, a millimeter from here and now. Is there's no here and now to even be going there and then? Yeah, this boundlessness that's exposed by no one to no one is it's too immediate, spontaneous, and free. It's too nothing for anyone to know about or relate to. It's it's just. That, 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 that separate institutionalized illusory experience cannot bear the boundlessness of what is. It, it has to, even though there's no one in there, it has to remain in that separate experience because it's death otherwise. So it, so it lives in relation to things that it's relating to. And teachings and practices offer an incredible amount of hope. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. The abbot still listens because I know that I know his attendant. Apparently, he still listens to talks mm -hmm. uh, by other monks, but he listens to his own talks, <laughs> his old talks from the eighties and nineties, because he's still searching. Right, he's still seeking, even though everybody thinks that he's enlightened. <laughs> I don't want to say. <laughs> oh. Oh. It's so wonderful, you know, it's just wonderful. It's so innocent, you know, this is unconditional innocence. No one ever went wrong or right. There is no one to go wrong or right. The unconditional innocence is is just staggering. The unconditional innocence. The enlightenment yeah. is everything. It's it's never obtained. Who could who could have everything? It's it's just already everything. <laughs> It's already everything. Including a sense of someone or something claiming to have that. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't even have any... I think I don't even have anything really to say or to even try to understand. Mm -hmm. I think I'm just wanting to talk just because for some kind of security, some kind of safety. Well, I don't think you got any of that, did you? No. That's what, but I'm still hoping for it. Mm. Yeah. I'm, I'm still expecting it to happen any minute. But I won't, be, I, you know, I won't be there or it's good fucking bonkers. It's crazy stuff, it's crazy stuff. Yeah. And it will never happen. It will never be revealed. It will never be anything other than what's happening because this is already liberation. But what if it did happen? What if all of a sudden I, I, you know, shaved my head and I was a monk and then all of a sudden I'd have this ding moment. I'd be sitting and I'd be happy forever just floating around, you know, in life and just living <laughs> like a Buddhist monk. <laughs> yeah. well, well, let me know when you get there. Yeah, let me know. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with any of that. You know, shaving heads and going to a Himalayan mountains or ashrams or temples or, or going to a bar or a back alley is all totally this. But there's nowhere or way to get to what is already unconditionally free. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Everything you say is unacceptable, you know? 
Good. Yeah, everything. Everything is unacceptable. I mean, it's yeah, it's blasphemy, but it's divine blasphemy, really. This is this is exposing that what is being looked for in every single direction is what is already. And looking is just seemingly veiling that freedom, which cannot be comprehended. It, it is already appearing as looking for what is already. There's there's no distance. There's no direction. There's no journey or destination. This is beyond polarity. So it could never be found because it is already what is. So looking is what is. Yeah. And And what about the idea that you guys are just, you know, Full of shit. It, yeah, you know, you, Izzy, Andreas, Tony, Jim, Tim, all of them, all of the all of the different people. What if you guys are all just full of crap and we're going to ruin our lives for nothing? Well, well, you know, that's what's happening. But there is already no chooser to fuck up a life or to make a good job of it. But that's, yeah, and then it's like, well, that's just your opinion. Mm. Mm. If, what there, if, in if there was a me that that was happening, choosing to say these words, maybe then that would sound like an opinion or a belief or a stance or a position to stand from and offend, yeah. defend. What is revealed is that there's no one behind or in front of any actions, thoughts, behavior, mm. feelings, or whatever else. All yeah. is happening without anyone in it. They're just a sense, an illusory accompanying sense that someone is yeah. in this and choosing what to think, feel, or behave, or how to respond to it. That is yeah. just as a dream. There's no chooser already who chose to scratch the face or chose to sit and listen more, some more or chose how to think and feel and then say something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> um. Uh, Laura's got something to say. Yeah, I'll mute myself. We'll have a break after this. Yeah. Well, not a break. I mean, a, a toilet situation. Hello. <laughs> the toilet situation hello hey <laughs> hey um so i don't know how my internet connection is um so i just um ask so i don't think that i'm looking for freedom but i've as long as i can remember i feel basically responsible for everything that is happening mm. in my life like so i think i i actually what i'm looking for is to be free of this, 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 like a uh, sense of responsibility, mm. like in, in innate sense of responsibility. Yes. So, mm. yeah, just, that was just coming up. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. That's it. <laughs> yeah. yeah so what is exposed although seemingly totally beyond comprehension is that there is no little or big bubble at the center of a body that is choosing how to drive it there is no driver, there's no passenger, there's just simply what's happening. No one is in control already. That just seems to, the sense of control seems to appear out of a, a, a felt sense of being here. And, and out of that seems to come with it that, no, I'm aware of what's happening and I am controlling this. But there is no center it's an illusion. The illusion is that there's a center that is moving the body in one way or another. And even observing thoughts and then choosing how to 
you know, flick through them like a filing cabinet or something, choosing which thoughts to pick out and navigate this and that, making a, a deal out of it. But that centre that seems to claim to be real and in control is completely unreal. It's not even happening at all. It's so, uh, it's amazing, energetically, illusorily appearing as a centre that's not real whatsoever. So that centre that feels like it has control and therefore responsibility is a dream. And whether that seems to be clear, concise, whether it seems to be conceptually felt or, or understood, or whether it feels like absolute nonsense that doesn't make any sense and cannot possibly be true, is all happening without anyone in control of those responses whether there's a resonating with that or a resisting that, it, th even that is out of anyone's control because there isn't anyone to have a say or an opinion about it. Opinions and sayings are just simply timelessly this. But are the words carrying some kind of vibration? That's why this is resonating or not. Mm. Or what do you think? The resonating would seem to be totally nothing to do with words and terms and concepts. And yet words, terms and concepts, this happening. It seems like there is something else. Yeah, which is beyond cause and effect, therefore yes. beyond hearing something, understanding it, and then living it. It's beyond the separation of a concept. Ah, that means this. And then, oh, yeah, and, uh, process yeah. and progression. Hence the word immediate too immediate to be in a realm of cause and effect, process and progress. In hospice, often people would say they were afraid of death, yet they, yet what appeared was that they were afraid of an imagined idea of death, yes. When you say there is no one and that can't be known, still in the illusion of the blank, of no me already gets filled with ideas. Yeah, perhaps, yeah. Because absence is thought of as a thing, because only things can be thought about or related to. So the word absence sounds like a thing, which isn't, yeah. Because absence is not a thing. It can never be known or understood, comprehended or related to. So instead, in the same way, when the word nothing is said, it's like, oh, what's nothing then? What's nothing? Is it a thing that I don't know about or a thing that I can figure out? It's, it's just nothing absolutely at all to hang on to. And so instead, ideas appear because that is something I can relate to, refer to, know about. Yeah, so the idea of death is, is perhaps fear and death is nothing. There's no death to fear because death is not a thing to be feared. It's, it's just fear. <laughs> 